Okay. All right. Welcome to another Photoshop lesson, tutorial, training, awesomeness, whatever you want to call it on YouTube. Um, this is my first video and I don't have the best quality mic, so bear with me. However, uh, we do have a pretty awesome graphic I'm going to show you here, how I made this. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I th I'm hoping I can get this done in under 15 minutes, crossing my fingers. Um, just because I, I personally don't like watching long videos either and I, want, I, I, I usually don't need to watch the whole thing to figure out how things were done. So I'm hoping I can cover things for both intermediate and advanced users, but also maybe the introductory guy who, who's familiar with the program but not familiar with the techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to recreate this from scratch um, as best as we can. It'll probably be a little bit different, but we are going to go move quickly so you do need to know the program. Pretty at least familiarize yourself with it. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new document. Uh, this one was designed for print, and so that's why the width and height, you can see the numbers, they're very um, not standard or typical. And you also notice the color mode is RGB, and I do realize that, but the way that this is made, we can't use some of the blending modes in CMYK color mode. We can in RGB, so we're just gonna have to convert this later into CMYK. And yes, we all know it's going to lose some color, but I'd rather be able to create the effect than not. So we're going to stay in the RGB color mode. To get started, we're going to fill our background with black. Alt backspace shortcut for that. And then we'll go ahead and get started with creating our background gradient. I went ahead and saved the two blues. And you can see those colors if I click right here. This is the light blue. It's about a 202 on the hue and about 100% brightness and saturation. The, uh, that was the dark one. The light one is 193, so a little more cyan, and it's 100 100 as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started by filling this with that blue, and then I'm just going to bring the opacity down. Uh, I like to control. I like to be in control when I'm creating my stuff. So we're just going to go down to uh, about so-so. Create a new document where we'll do, or not a new document, new layer, and throw on that gradient. Oops. I want to make sure we have the transparent foreground to background one. Just like that. That is a little big, but, you know, I'm just going to do that. And we're going to move that opacity down. Sometimes I like to purposely overkill stuff just because you never know. You might want to, oh, yeah, it's just it's nice to be able to see things later on as you're putting the final pieces together because sometimes when you're designing the text elements you're not sure if you have a high enough contrast between your foreground and background so I like to set my stuff up so that I can change those things later in the final end to really make the text or the graphics pop out or whatever the message may be so we're just going to stick with this okay the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our, our text and our guy that we have here in the image. This is a font and this is an actual brush. In fact, actually everything in this is done with brushes. There's no vectors or anything like that or filters. So we're going to go ahead and start with our our guy. I've um, already got him loaded up here. Uh, I got him from some silhouette jumping brushes I found off of uh, DeviantArt. I don't remember who, oh well, there you go, LPD Dragonfly was the guy who made this set and uh, so there you have that resource if you wanted to do that. We'll create a new layer. And then I think we'll just put them right here, roughly about center. Make sure that my swatches down here are set to my foreground and background, which is a shortcut D on the keyboard. Um, I don't know Mac shortcuts. These are for PCs. I, I work on a PC myself. So we'll go ahead and click that there. It's probably a little bit large, but rather too large than too small. So we'll do that, bring his opacity down, he's just barely there. Grab our text tool, shortcut T. The font that I'm using for this is called the Blood Shack. I know you can get that off Devon Yard because I think that's where I found that, found that one. Electricity, electrify. Okay, put that about so-so. I like to work in thirds, just keep in mind the third rule of thirds. Make sure that guy is centered on there by selecting the entire document and then going up here to center. Same thing for the electrify, control A, 
center, and it was just barely off. Okay, to get started for the, electric, the, the electricity effect, what we need to do is apply a simple layer style. Uh, um, a little glow to it that we can then add uh, electricity coming out. And that's going to be done by putting uh, a gradient overlay. And I'll show you why first, why we, we needed the gradient overlay on this. Uh, we're going to start doing an inner glow. And that inner glow is going to actually be similar to the center color here in the image. Maybe just a little brighter and a little bluer. And we're going to put that to color dodge. Color dodge only interacts with colors lighter than black, so there's not gonna you're not gonna see anything showing up, and this is why we're going to create a gradient overlay right here. So as you can see, there you go. You can barely start seeing it, but it's taken away from the electric effect. So we're gonna edit this gradient to a uh, from a black to a dark blue. We're just gonna probably select one of the dark blues out here, and that looks. Pretty decent, maybe not enough. And then we'll do the same thing with the black. We're gonna do a, a dark blue, but make it quite a bit darker to the point where you, you don't even know that it's a black, but it'll still interact with uh, the other effect here, the inner glow. So let's go ahead and increase the size of that. And until it's already too big, too bright already. I actually might need to do this. No, I just do too much. Just ever so slightly and probably maybe that. Kind of like that one better. Make sure I turn on anti-aliasing. Uh, that just kind of helps remove the sharp edges. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. But I just like to keep that on. And we're going to apply an outer glow, same thing, but we are going to make this a little more uh, of a cyan color, I think, to kind of separate that from the background. I'll just extend the glow size, go up, change the blending mode to color dodge, and turn that up to 100%. Okay, we'll just see where that gets us. We'll probably have to come back and tweak it. We just want to get the basics down with it so far. In fact, I can probably already tell we're going to want to adjust that. So I'm going to type in the 16 just to increase that. Okay, there we go. We've got the text and the guy jumping in the air. kind of do have this feeling he's a little too big. So we're going to shrink that down. I didn't, want, I didn't want him to be the prominent thing in this, in this graphic. I wanted him to kind of be in the background. So there we go. There we go. So now we're going to add the the electricity and little sound waves and stuff like that into the image here. If you notice, some of them are going into him and some of them aren't to get and give it the depth that, uh, you know, where he's at in the image, that there is some stuff that's in front, there's some stuff in back, and then he's in the middle and between it all. So we'll go through and do this. Keep in mind, this isn't going to look exact. We're just going to go through and kind of create the general idea of it. In fact, I can already tell we've got too bright of a, a background right there. But anyways, we'll still keep it there. Okay, so to get started, we are going to create a group. And the reason we do the group is because it won't, if we were to create just a simple layer like this, go grab the brush, and we're going to load the Soundwave brush by CF Fowler. And... I am going to append that, which just adds it to my current brushes, but I did already have it in here. And I'm going to show you why we do a group. Because if we select this brush and we put it on the layer like this, oops, I'm going to show you white, we went ahead and put it in here. First thing you would notice is it's white, and we need to get it to kind of look like this, like it's glowing and giving off light. And that does not look like that. Uh, to do that, we need to put it in a color dodge, but, you know, 